Hey fam, what's up? It's April. Today, we are finally doing the Clockwork Angel Read With Me vlog. Now, I am a trash human being and I've actually already started reading it, but I didn't start the vlog, but it's fine. So, I've only read 130 pages. We've still got a huge chunk left, but I was just so excited to reread this because The Infernal Devices is my favorite Shadowhunter series. So yeah, this vlog is going to be all about my experience rereading it and annotating and tabbing it. This might look a little confusing right now, um, so this first bit is obviously what I've already read. And then I've split it up into sections to read every day. So my plan is I'm going to read today's section, tomorrow's section which is Friday, and then read the rest over the weekend. That's my plan, because I want to finish this this week, and it's already Thursday. So yeah, let's just go over my tabs and annotations for the first 130 pages of this book, because it's already so much, oh my gosh, and I am obsessed. So firstly, we've got this very cool map. I love that they include these. And then I also read the forward, and Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that Charlotte Branwell is named after Charlotte and Branwell Bronte. That is so cool. So starting off with the prologue, the first thing is when Will is like trying to show off to Jem. It says he frowned in annoyance. It was much less fun showing off without Jem to show off to. <laughs> oh, I love them so much. And then I just highlighted this in yellow just because it made me chuckle a little bit. Oh, I missed these characters so much. And then Tessa comes to London. She is kidnapped and forced to use her ability that she never knew she had. And then Will comes and rescues her. And I just already love their banter. He's like, you cut me. It might be fatal. And then Tess is like, are you the Magister? And he's like, dear me, massive blood loss. Death could be imminent. Are you the Magister? Magister? That means master in Latin, doesn't it? I suppose it does. I've mastered many things in my life. Navigating the streets of London, dancing the quadrille, the Japanese art of flower arranging, lying at charades, concealing a highly intoxicated state, delighting young women with my charms. Tess is stared. Alas, he went on, no one has ever actually referred to me as the Master or the Magister either. More's the pity. Are you highly intoxicated at the moment? <laughs> and then he takes her to the Institute and she meets everybody and Jessamine is so annoying. Oh my god. So they all think that Tessa is a warlock and Jessamine's like, is it dreadful being so evil? Are you worried you'll go to hell? What do you think the devil's like? And I just wrote, rolls eyes. And then Henry comes in. Oh my gosh, I love him so much. And it's like, but none of that was what had made Charlotte scream. It was the fact that his left arm appeared to be on fire. Classic. And then Will's like, Henry, you're on fire. And he's like, oh yes, I've been working like a man possessed all day. <laughs> and then he finally puts out the fire and he's like, you know what this means? Will set the vase down that you set yourself on fire and didn't even notice. That the flame retardant mixture I developed last week works. This material must have been burning for a good 10 minutes and it isn't even half burned through. Perhaps I ought to set the other sleeve on fire to see how long Henry said Charlotte. If you set yourself on fire deliberately, I will institute divorce proceedings. And then Henry sees Tessa and he's like, I know you. You bit me! Because she didn't know who he was and so she bit him. Oh my gosh. I am living for all of these interactions. And then we have Jessamine being an asshole again, saying, I think she's simply a little sneak who knows that if we believe she's a downworlder, we'll have to treat her well because of the accords. And Tessa's like, oh man, I'm going to have to show them what I can do so they believe me. And then Will is like, you can keep it a secret but secrets have their own weight and it can be a very heavy one. And if you didn't know, uh, this color is for like quotes that I really like. And then she changes into Jessamine in front of all of them. And then Jessamine is like, goodness, my nose is enormous. Why didn't anyone tell me? And then here, uh, Henry's like, it isn't against the law to be an idiot. And then Jessamine's like, lucky for you. And I'm like, poor Henry, everyone treats him so poorly. And then, of course, whenever Magnus is first uh, introduced in every single Shadowhunter book, I always put a love heart because I love him so much. And then Will is 
taking her for a tour around the institute and they meet Thomas and Tess is like, perhaps he's in love with Agatha, who's the cook. And Will is like, I hope not. I intend to marry Agatha myself. She may be a thousand years old, but she makes an incomparable jam tart. Beauty fades, but cooking is eternal. And then on the next page, we have like the most iconic quote of this entire book. When Tessa says, one must always be careful of books and of what is inside them, for words have the power to change us. And then they're talking about books. I love that they're like bonding over books. It's so cute. And Will's like, I think we have Alice in Wonderland uh, in here somewhere. And she's like, I never liked it much. Seemed like so much nonsense. And I'm like, same Tessa, because I really don't like Alice in Wonderland. And then I love this quote as well when Will says, there's plenty of sense in nonsense sometimes if you wish to look for it. And then, oh my gosh, I highlighted in pink for love when they're talking about how they're orphans and everything. And Tessa's like, so you are one another's family. And then Tessa says, I think I would prefer it if you called me by my Christian name as you do with Miss Lovelace. Will looked at her slow and hard, then smiled. His blue eyes lit when he smiled. Then you must do the same for me. Tessa. And I'm like, I am already sweating. She had never thought about her name much before, but when he said it, it was as if she was hearing it for the first time. And then I love this because Tessa's like, you don't mean Charlotte doesn't fight, does she? Not the way you and Henry do. Certainly she does. Why wouldn't she? Because she's a woman, Tessa said. So was Bodicea. And I'm like, yes, women can fight their own battles. Thank you very much. And then I love how Will is saying about Bodicea, or however you say her name, she was braver than any man. I like to think Charlotte is much in the same mold, if somewhat smaller. And then I have another eye roll here when Tess is like, but she can't be any good at it, can she? I mean, women don't have those sort of feelings. And I'm like, oh, Tessa. Oh, Tessa. And then here they're talking about books again. And Will is like laughing at her. And he's like, I've never seen anyone get so excited over books before. You'd think they were diamonds. Well, they are, aren't they? And then I wrote here, Tessa is the OG booktuber because <laughs> she's getting so excited over books like all of us do. And then I highlighted in orange, which means like relatable, not necessarily to myself, but relatable to our world. And it says, if there was one thing Tessa hated, it was being told that there were things she couldn't understand because she was young, because she was a girl for any of a thousand reasons that never seem to make any real sense. And I just wrote, will this ever change? Sigh. All right, and then the beginning of chapter five, we have another quote that I love. It says, he didn't know what books meant to her, that books were symbols of truth and meaning, that this one acknowledged that she existed and that there were others like her in the world, which is how a lot of us feel when we read books where characters are similar to us. Like for me, it's when I read books with characters with anxiety. It's like, yes, I'm not the only one. And then we are introduced to Jem for the first time. Oh my gosh, my sweet cinnamon roll Jem. And then I like how, I think Jem says this. He says, dreams can be dangerous things. And then this, it is funny, but it does have a problematic term in it, which makes me kind of annoyed. Will is talking about how he'd gone out drinking and everything, and he's saying, No sooner had I consumed my third drink in the devil than I was accosted by a delightful small flower-selling child who asked me for two pence for a daisy. The price seemed steep, so I refused. When I told the girl as much, she proceeded to rob me. A little girl robbed you, Tessa said. Actually, she wasn't a little girl at all, as it turns out, but a midget problematic term, in a dress with a penchant for violence who goes by the name of Six-Fingered Nigel. Easy mistake to make, Jem said. So it is funny, I just wish they didn't use that word. And then Tessa cracks a joke? Oh my gosh, we love a funny queen. Will says, I have an assignation, I've literally never heard that word in my life, in Soho this evening with a certain attractive someone. Goodness, Tessa said to the back of his head. If you keep seeing Six-Fingered Nigel like this, he'll expect you to declare your intentions. Jem choked on his tea. <laughs> and then Henry and Charlotte go to visit Axel Mortmain, or Mortman, however you want to pronounce it, who is uh, Tessa's brother's boss, uh, because Tessa's brother has gone missing. And in his office were animal heads on the walls. And oh, that just makes me so angry. So I highlighted it in green, which is my angry color. And then, shocker, Mr. Mortman's like, 
Though I must say, if he ever mentioned that he had cousins who were shadow hunters, I can't say I recall it. OMG, Mr. Mortman knows there's shadow hunters. What else does he know? And that's where we're up to. We're up to chapter 6, page 127. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this book so much. So I will update you. My next section that I'm reading, I'm reading until page 173. So I have about... 50 pages to read. So I will check back in with you then. Good morning, Noomi. Good morning, Lucas. <laughs> wow, my fringe looks terrible. Well, I'll just have to fix that later. <laughs> it's turned into like a curtain fringe. Hey guys. So I am finally doing an update on Clockwork Angel. I've been reading this for so long. I just have had so many other books that I wanted to read and just have been really busy with work and stuff. So we're here to do an update. We are now 300 pages in, 310 pages in. So we're that far through. We have about 150 pages to discuss, which is about this much. So let's just get into it. Okay, so we're up to chapter six, Strange Earth, page 127. Will and Jem have gone back to the Dark Sisters Manor while Tessa and Jessamine are going out shopping and Jessamine is, as per usual, being the actual worst. They're talking about Sophie and she says, you've seen what her face looks like. Being hideous has made her bitter. A lady's maid is meant to be pretty and speak French and Sophie can't manage either. I told Charlotte as much when she brought the girl home. Charlotte didn't listen to me. She never does. Why is she so horrible? And then on the next page, she's, she, oh my God. Okay. She says, Jem's pleasant enough, but you know how foreigners are. Not really trustworthy and basically selfish and lazy. He's always in his room pretending to be ill, refusing to do anything to help out. Oh my gosh, I hate her, as you can probably tell. And then I'm literally on the next page. Girls shouldn't read novels. Oh my god. Oh, and on the next page, it just keeps getting better. I could marry a shadow hunter. Jessamine spat out the word and live like Charlotte, having to dress like a man and fight like a man. It's disgusting. Women aren't meant to behave like that. We are meant to graciously preside over lovely homes, to decorate them in a manner that is pleasing to our husbands, to uplift and comfort them with our gentle and angelic presence. Like, are you for real? I mean, I know this is set in the 1800s, but like, reading it now makes me so angry. And then Henry and Charlotte are still talking to Mortman, and he is dumb. <laughs> And I love Charlotte. She's like, a great deal of the time, what we are protecting humans from is their own very foolish selves. I see that you are no exception to this rule. And then Mortman tells them that it's De Quincey that is the magister and everything. And they're talking about the like clockwork creatures that Mortman and De Quincey are creating or whatever. And Henry says, inanimate objects are harmless indeed, Mr. Mortman. But one cannot always say the same of the men who use them. I was like, wow, that's powerful. And the next thing, I just highlighted this because I love it, how they describe the institute. It was part home, part boarding school, and part battle station. And I love that description. And then Camille, Lady Belcourt, has come to visit Tessa. And of course, Will and Jem come along. And Camille recognizes Will. And Charlotte's like, you know each other? William won 20 pounds from me at Pharaoh. A few weeks ago, in a downworld gambling house run by the Pandemonium Club. He did? Charlotte looked at Will, who shrugged. It was part of the investigation. I was disguised as a foolish mundane who had come to the place to partake in vice. It would have aroused suspicion had I refused to gamble. Nevertheless, Will, that money you won was evidence. You should have given it to the clave. I spent it on gin. Will! Will shrugged. The spoils of vice are a burdensome responsibility. Yet one you seem strangely able to bear, observed Jem. Also, Blackie's come to join us. Hi. Oh my gosh. You love Luna. Blackie loves cuddling with Luna. Anyways. <laughs> and then Jem speaks up. And he says, Lady Belcourt, if you'll pardon my asking, what is it exactly that you want from Tessa? 
And I wrote, he's already looking out for her, cries. I love him so much. And then Camille wants proof that Tessa can actually transform into other people. So she, tr so she transforms into Camille and she gets a shock because her heart stops beating and she's like kind of having a panic attack. And then Jem like takes her hands and like is trying to comfort her. <laughs> it says he stroked her hand carefully, soothingly and looked up at her with his silver eyes. And then they're talking about Magnus Bane and Camille's like, Magnus Bane is my lover, you see. Tessa's mouth opened slightly. This was not the sort of thing ladies said in polite company, or any company, but perhaps it was different for vampires? Everyone else looked as stunned as she, as she did, except Will, who, as usual, looked as if he were trying not to laugh. Uh, how nice, Charlotte said at last after a pause. And then Camille suggests that they go to one of De Quincey's parties, where Tessa is wearing... Camille's skin to try and find out some information and then we also meet Gabriel Lightwood oh my gosh and then they are getting ready to go to the party and Will's like just be careful when we arrive at the house you can't look to me for help or instruction remember I am your human subjugate you keep me about you for blood blood whenever you want it and nothing else so you're not going to speak tonight at all not unless you instruct me to said Will this evening sounds as if it might be better than I thought. <laughs> and then in the carriage, Will and Tessa have this conversation that I love so much where they talk about books and book characters and it's just the best thing ever. They talk about the Three Musketeers and A Tale of Two Cities and it's just so wholesome. And then they go to the party and there's a human that they're going to sacrifice and, spoiler alert, it's Nathaniel, her brother. Shocker! And then they fight the vampires, but De Quincey gets away and everyone's upset about it. Tess is badass and shoots De Quincey in the shoulder. It's just a great time. And then another conversation with Gabriel. Gabriel and Will are talking and he's like, you know, there was a time I thought we could be friends, Will. There was a time I thought I was a ferret, Will said. But that turned out to be the opium haze. Did you know that that had that effect? Because I didn't. <laughs> and I love this quote from Jem. He says, whatever you are physically, he said, male, female, strong or weak, ill or healthy, all those things matter less than what your heart contains. If you have the soul of a warrior, you are a warrior. Whatever the color, the shape, the design of the shade that conceals it, the flame inside the lamp remains the same. You are that flame. Oh my gosh. And then Will's in the attic. Uh, trying to avoid drinking holy water so he doesn't turn into a vampire because he bit De Quincey. And then they kiss! Luna, did you know that they kiss? But then he's an asshole at the end and he's like, please leave, I'm begging you, just leave. And I put a sad face because like we know why he's doing that. I mean, if you've already read it, you know why. But it's sad for Tessa. And then Tessa's talking to Sophie and Sophie says, My last employer, he was always off on a safari in Africa and India, shooting tigers and things. I hate people that do that so much. They should go to jail forever. And then Will is in another one of his moods and he's talking to Charlotte and Jem and Tessa. And Will's like, nothing Henry invents ever works. If you just admit your husband's a useless fool, we'd all be a lot better off. Just like, whoa, Will too far. And Charlotte's like, he's known you since you were a boy. He cares for you like you were his own younger brother. As do I. All I've ever done is love you, Will. Yes, said Will, and I wish you wouldn't. Charlotte made a pained noise like a kicked puppy. <laughs> and then I highlighted this. Charlotte is very sensitive about the way the Institute is run. As a woman, she must fight to be heard, and even then her decisions are second-guessed. You heard Benedict Lightwood at the Enclave meeting. She feels she has no freedom to make a mistake. And I'm like, well, that sounds familiar. Has the world changed in 200 years? That would be a no. And that's where we're up to. We're up to Blackfriars Bridge. Oh my gosh. So Jem is about to take Tessa to the iconic Blackfriars Bridge. And I'm so excited. Are you excited? Are you excited? Boom. Well, I'm excited. So I think the next time I update you, I will have finished the book. I'm so excited. There are so many amazing quotes in this book. And I just, oh, I can't wait to continue on with this. Hey! So we finally finished Clockwork Angel. <laughs> so it is time to go through the last portion of annotations. And then we will do a final little chat at the end. And then we're going to read City of Fallen Angels. But that'll be in the next video. <laughs> so, chapter 14, Blackfriars Bridge. Holy moly, 
Let's dive in. Also, would this even be an annotation vlog if it didn't have Luna's butt in it? Definitely not. So Jem and Tessa, they go to the bridge and then they are attacked by clockwork creatures. And Jem didn't take any of his drug before they left. So he's really, really weak and it's really, really scary. And is that crumbs? Oh my gosh. Don't eat while reading, kids. So they come back and Jem is in a bad state. And then Jem decides to finally tell Tessa about his past and why he is like this. So I put a blue tab because it's a really sad moment when he's telling Tessa about how him and his parents were captured and tortured and how they died. And then he tells her how he was experimented on with this drug and now he's dependent on it. And then Will comes in and ruins the moment, as per usual. And then Tessa's like, okay, I'll go. And Jem is like, must you go? I was rather hoping you'd stay and be a ministering angel, but if you must go, you must. I'll stay, Will said a bit crossly and threw himself down in the armchair. I can minister angelically, none too convincingly. And you're not as pretty to look at as Tessa is, Jem said. How rude. Many who have gazed upon me have compared the experience to gazing at the radiance of the sun. Jem still had his eyes closed. If they mean it gives you a headache, they aren't wrong. <laughs> and then they find Nate and Nate is going through this whole story about how he came to uh, London and blah, blah, blah. And he's telling the story and then Will's like, that was enterprising. Will sounded nearly impressed. Nate smiled. Tessa shot him a furious look. Don't look pleased with yourself. When Will says enterprising, he means morally deficient. No, I mean enterprising, said Will. When I mean morally deficient, I say, now that's something I would have done. <laughs> and then they figure out that De Quincey is planning something. So all the adult shadow hunters go off to do that. And then Will and Tessa are talking and Tessa is being so nosy. She's like, don't you want to go home? When like, obviously Will didn't tell her about how he left home and everything. She heard about it from someone else and now she's bringing it up with him. And she's like, who's Cecily? Who's Cecily? She's like, oh my gosh, just leave him alone. And then Mortman shows up and is like, hey, so the Dark Sisters, they're gonna be here doing a spell for De Quincey. You should go and stop them. So Jem and Will are like, oh, we should do that. <laughs> so they're about to leave and Jem takes Tessa's hand and kisses the back of it to say goodbye. <laughs> uh. So they go to take care of the Dark Sisters, but then Mortman comes back with all the clockwork creatures. So he lured everyone away so he could attack the Institute and get Tessa back and Agatha, dies. Agatha is attacked by a clockwork creature. Also, do you like my socks? <laughs> and then Mortman comes in and Nathaniel Gray is there just chilling beside him. And he's like, Nathaniel Gray, excellently done. I admit my faith in you was tested, tested sorely, but you have recovered admirably from your past missteps. I'm proud of you. And then he's like, it was only ever my desire to serve you, Magister. Shocker! Mortman's a Magister, and Nate betrayed them all. Meanwhile, at the Dark Sisters Manor, Jem comes across a cat in a cage, and it's Church. Oh my god, I forgot how Church comes to be in the Institute. And Jem's like, it's still alive. And Will's like, it's a cat, James. We have bigger things to worry about. But Jem scooped up the grey Persian anyway. And then Mrs. Dark shows her true form in the pentagram. And she says, this is my true form. An ugly surprise for you, I suppose. Hello, Luna. I'll play with you in a minute. <laughs> and then Will says, I dare say it's an improvement. You weren't much to look at before and at least the horns are dramatic. <laughs> and then she reveals that her sister was a warlock, but she is a full-blooded demon. So that's fun. And then it goes back to what's happening at the Institute and Tessa and Nate are talking. And Nate says, you disappointed him. You ran from the Dark Sisters knowing what it would cost me. Your sisterly affection leaves something to be desired, Tessie. And I just wrote, what a trash human. And then I totally forgot about this. Nate is talking about Aunt Harriet. So unfortunate the way she died, he grinned. Didn't you think it was a bit odd that I'd sent you a box of chocolates? Something I knew you wouldn't eat. Something I knew she would. Oh my gosh, he killed Aunt Harriet. What the heck? But then Jessamine comes through and sneaks up on Nate and smashes a lamp against his head so he passes out. And then when Mortman realizes what's happened, he calls her a whore. So 
that's great. So Will and Jem realize what have happened and Will races back on a horse and he finds Thomas. And then Will goes to give Thomas a shadow hunter's farewell. And Thomas is like, not a shadow hunter. And Will's like, you defended the Institute. You did as well as any of us would have done. And then Thomas is like, she's alive. The one you came back for, her, Tessa, she's with Sophie. Take care of Sophie, Will. Um, excuse me, sir. I am in the middle of something. Thank you very much. Um, are you done? No? Okay. Are you done now? Great. And then he dies and Will's like, sleep then, good and faithful servant of the Nephilim and thank you. And then Jem finally makes it back to the Institute and runs into Jessamine. And then he also runs into Nate. And Nate says, that thing is not my sister. And Jem says, it's hard to believe, isn't it? that you and Tessa share anything at all, even a single drop of blood. She is so much finer than you. And then Nate and the clockwork creatures are advancing on Jem, but then Henry comes back and then Charlotte comes back, but Nathaniel is gone with the Pixis. And then hello Blackie. And then Mortman is in the sanctuary trying to get Tessa, but Tessa is threatening to kill herself and she's demanding answers. And uh, Mortman says, that her mother was unfaithful to her father. But if my father was a demon, why am I not marked like a warlock? Indeed, why are you not? Perhaps because your mother had no idea what she was any more than you do. What do you mean my mother was human? Miss Grey, you continue to ask the wrong questions. But of course, he didn't give her all the answers she wanted and she drives the knife toward her chest. And then Will is racing to the sanctuary to get to Tessa in time. And he's like, you killed her. And he's like, no. I didn't touch her, she did this to herself. Blah, 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 blah. And then he disappears, somehow. And wow, Tessa's not really dead. She changed at the last minute into a girl who was bleeding. So it would look like she was bleeding, but then she changed back. So she didn't actually die. So they host a funeral for all of the Shadowhunters lost and Agatha and Thomas. And then Charlotte asks Tessa to stay at the Institute. And then Will and Tessa kiss again, but then he turns into an asshole again. And is being like, well, which rooms should we use? Now you have come to tell me you will be here, available to me, for as long as I might wish it. I am offering you what I thought you wanted. You cannot mean that. And you cannot have imagined I meant anything more, Will said. There is no future for a shadow hunter who dallies with warlocks. One might befriend them, employ them, but not marry them, Tessa said. And then she's like, ugh, bye. But then Jem comes in to comfort her and he says, when I first came here, I was 12 years old. It most decidedly did not feel like home to me then. I saw only how London was not like Shanghai and I was homesick. So Will went down to a shop in the East End and bought me this. I think he liked it because it reminded him of a fist, but it was Jade and he knew Jade came from China. So he brought it back to me and I hung it on a chain to wear it. I still wear it. And then the epilogue where Will goes to Magnus and is like, help me, but we don't know what the heck he needs help with, but I guess we'll find out in the next book. <sighs> so this time around, I gave this book five stars, which I have never done before. I used to only give it four stars. I don't know why, but this time around, I think just really taking in all of the beautiful quotes and everything really made me appreciate it more and I just I really love these characters especially Jem the more I reread this series the more I am a Jem stan and not a Will stan like I was a Will stan the first time but now I'm all for Jem like give me Jem I love him so much he is so kind and beautiful and I also just love the time period that this is set in. It's my favorite time period to read about, the 1800s. And I love the London setting. And I just love the story and the side characters and just everything about it. I just love it so much. I think this series is so superior to her other series. But anyway, next we will be reading City of Fallen Angels. It should be interesting. So thank you so much for joining me on this Shadow Hunter journey. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in a new one. Goodbye.